Okay, so if we are asked to integrate e to the 3x plus 1 dx, okay, um, since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, then the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And almost always, um, you're going to have to do some kind of u substitution uh, when you're integrating e. Uh, and your u is almost always going to be the exponent. Okay, so if we're looking at this problem here, our u needs to be 3x plus 1. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 3. Uh, we do not have a constant of 3 in the problem, so we need to move that to the other side. So we have 1 third du is equal to dx. So we have 1 third times the integral of e to the u du. So that is 1 third e to the, I'm going to go ahead and plug my u back in, 3x plus 1 plus c. This is indefinite integration. Do not forget your constant of integration. And obviously it would be really easy to check by taking the derivative to make sure you get the original. Okay. B is uh, a little bit more involved because we have an x and we have e to the negative x squared. But as I mentioned before, almost always your u is going to be the exponent. Okay, so that exponent is negative x squared. So du over dx is negative 2x we do not have negative 2x, we have 5x, so we need to move the negative 2. So we're going to be replacing the x dx with negative 1 half du, so we've got 5 times negative 1 half times the integral of e to the u du, so we've got negative 5 halves e to the negative x squared plus C as our solution. <clears throat> okay, now that uh, third example there, C, looks a little weird. Okay, it looks a little weird the way I had to type it. Uh, if you want to write beside this more of what it would really look like on your paper, um, it would look more like this if they were giving you this problem. e to the 1 over x over x squared. It may look like it's a little confusing as to what your u should be, but again, almost always your u is going to be the exponent of uh, e. So u is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is, if you need to rewrite it as x to the negative 1, that's fine negative x to the negative 2. It may look like we don't have that in our problem, but remember, x to the negative 2 is really, that's negative 1 over x squared. So we've got over x squared in our problem. We do need to move the negative to the other side. So we can replace the x squared in the denominator and the dx with negative du. So our integral here is equal to negative e to the 1 over x plus c. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't always manipulate it to be what you want it to be. If you had picked the x squared here, your derivative would have been 2x, and then there would be no way to replace the exponent on the e. Um, so, yes, it is true that we somewhat do manipulate things, but if you pick the wrong u, you're not going to be able to replace everything in the problem you need to replace. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
you know, I mean, honestly, I'm just saying almost always because I don't want to say that it is definitely always, but it pretty much yeah. always is. Because it, it's the, you, you're not going to be able to, re, unless you pick that for you, there's no way that you're going to be able to replace that with the other part of U substitution. So it pretty much always is the exponent. Okay, uh, let's look at one involving a little bit of trig. Uh, again, if we stick with the idea that the exponent is our u, that still works out for us here because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but that's okay. We can get rid of that negative. We can move that over. So we've got negative integral of e to the u du. So that would be negative e to the cosine of x plus c. And again, I'm not going through it, but you can always check your integration. All you have to do is take the derivative of what you said the answer is, and it should give you the original expression. So honestly, that's why they don't put a whole lot of just straight up integrate this problems on uh, the multiple choice portion of the exam because if you know all your derivative rules you can take the derivative of the answer choices to match to, to see which one matches the problem now that's not very time efficient but worst case scenario it's what you should do all right now let's look at some definite integrals okay let's look at some definite integrals um, now this first one Technically, it uses u substitution, but it's very, very simple, okay? It's just the fact that we have a negative in front of the x, so I'm not actually going to go through the process of u substitution with this problem. Um, the integral of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x, but this is definite integration, so we're going to plug in our limits here. So we have negative e to the negative 1 minus negative e to the, there's no such thing as negative zero, so it's just zero. So let's simplify this a little bit. e to the negative one should be expressed as one over e, and we are subtracting a negative, so that's the same as adding, and e to the zero is one. That may be how the answer is expressed. They may get a common denominator, so it's not a big deal if they do. Um, that will just end up being e minus 1 over e. Are we okay with that? It stays in the numerator, so it stayed with the negative 1. And then I just flipped the order. So when I did this, <coughs> if, if it's avoidable, They may do that, they may not. Who knows? All right. Ooh, let's look at B here. B looks a little weird. We've got the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x. Now, here's a case of where we don't do u substitution, u substitution with the exponent because the exponent is just x. This is going to be u substitution with... What part do we all have? Denominator. The denominator. It is with the denominator. Uh, so u is 1 plus e to the x. The derivative of 1 plus e to the x is e to the x. Well, that's convenient because that's what's in our numerator. Um... And just as a little reminder, I'm going to change my limits based on my u substitution. So when I plug in 0, we've got 1 plus e to the 0. So that's 1 plus 1. Our lower limit is now 2. Our upper limit, 1 plus e to the first. So 
So that's just 1 plus e is our new upper limit. The value of e is about 2.76, something like that. No. Okay. Um, let's see here. We're replacing e to the x dx with u. We've got 1 over u du. What? Right. Yes. So If you didn't change the limits, then you would plug your u back into the equation and then plug in your limits. So this, this just kind of cuts out a, a middle step. All right. So but you're, but you're doing, doing the same, same work one way or another. I'm just doing it at this point. Um, it, it, it is not the end of the world if you don't do it. Yes, it is not the end of the world if you don't do it. Okay, so what um, what's the integral of one over u? Natural log. Natural log. The natural log of the absolute value of u, just in case. Uh, but in this case, it is okay. Both those values are positive. Um, so we've got, see, th this is what I'm talking about right here. I don't have to plug you back in because I changed my limits. If you didn't change the limits, then you would put the 1 plus e to the x back in, and then you would be plugging in 1 and 0. Um, but I, I already did that part of the work. Okay? So we've got the natural log of 1 plus e minus the natural log of 2. Um, the only thing that they may do to this is combine, and they probably will, they'll combine those natural logs. When you're subtracting natural logs, it becomes a quotient. I'm glad that y'all are finally remembering that. In pre-calc, yeah, we talked about the properties of logarithms, yeah. I know. Okay. So I know it doesn't look pretty, but that is the answer. Ooh, here's an interesting one. That's not mine. That's not mine. The integral from negative 1 to 0 of e to the x times the cosine of e to the x dx. What do y'all think u needs to be? E to the x. Which one? The one in the Good. Good. Y'all got it. Yes, this is this is the e to the x that we are using. It's gonna be the same thing, right? It would be u cosine u. No, it would not be u cosine of u. Because if you said that this one was your u, that would be replacing u, but how you, you can't. What's, how, how can we take the derivative, or how can we take the integral of u cosine of u? We can't, because that's a product. That's control k. Right, you, yes, yes. That's control k. No, it is not. Discrete. Uh, I, I can try. these limits. We need to get you a lot in Mayberry Mall when you get too bad. I think a lot of people would buy your little network. Do you think so? Yeah. I'd get a put a parenthesis in the problem. Thanks. Okay. 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 Okay.
Maybe that should be our new affirmation. Oh, it should have been.